What's up guys? We're back with another video. Another little update on the E46 get you guys going. But we did get a new control arm and bushing because I found out the driver's side was shot on the subframe up front. Uh, we got new inner and outer tie rods, boots, got new motor mounts, and uh, yeah, we also got this new oil pan gasket. I I, uh, I haven't been able to drill a hole in the weld yet, but getting there. But we did get our gaskets, so that puts us further on that. I uh, also got some like hose fitting, some and lines and stuff for the turbo pump. And I also got this two inch charge pipe. It's come off the turbo, so hopefully now we can actually fit the turbo up to the rest of the charge piping to connect it to the uh, intercooler. So that's what we're gonna be throwing on today. So let's jump into that and have some fun. So as you can see, we got some new boots, some tie down, and some inner and outer rods. So I'm gonna be taking off my inner and outer rods, measuring those, matching those links to these links installing them one side at a time new boots and grease and everything make sure they're all good to go that way my alignment's not off because i know the alignment that was already on here was perfect <clears throat> um, we got we got some creative fuel slash oil hose we're gonna be using for our pump and possibly gonna use the rest of that for like maybe our catch can setup because this kind of just looks crappy with this heater hose on here although it works yeah we got a whole bunch of an fittings in here dash 10 an fittings um and i had i got some dash 10 to dash 8 an fittings which i thought were the size are you at pump for the old pump right there but that's actually a 3.8 MPT, so I've got some more fittings coming off that. 3.8 MPT, 2A-10, so that way I can fit up these dash 10s for the drain off the turbo and the pump, because that's what most people recommend. So I'm gonna get started with the inner and outer tie rods and the boots, and the control arm's on the way, so it should be showing up here shortly. So we'll replace that control arm, because after pulling it upon further inspection, this control arm completely shot. Got a new one of these coming in. Um, like I said, we're gonna replace these torn boots, inners and outers, this control arm. Then we're gonna get the pan bung. We're gonna weld that on. Uh, probably show the whole right around this area here, next to the dipstick, vertical. Get that, put it back up in there. And then at that point, we can pretty much start the car up. Can't really run it or drive it or put any boost on it but we can start it up so let's jump into it just like that we have the control arm out of one side so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this this whole tie rod off and then reattach it and then wait on the control arm on this side and then I'll go ahead and I'll pop off this tie rod and be done with this stuff All right, well, I got the wheel off and I got the tie rod off the wheel, but I cannot get these inner tie rods off the rack. I'm thinking that they're seized on these inner tie rods. And uh, I did this side off camera because I was struggling a little bit. I could not get the inner tie rods off, so I went ahead and I left them there. Uh, and I just went ahead and put the new boots and the new outers on. Um, really didn't want to go ahead and buy a new rack. I didn't have that in the budget plan so kind of left that one alone um gonna regrease this side redo the boot on this side um so i'll show you guys that real quick so cut to looks 
pretty nice and new. Got everything buttoned up, got all the new ties on there. So just waiting on our new control arm to come in, which should be here any minute now. I'll go ahead and connect that tie rod back up to the hub. Wait on the control arm to get here and then that'll be all done. We'll clean that up a little bit more and uh, set that to the side and continue on with what else we're doing. Mount the turbo back up with the manifold and throw on the two inch charge pipe. See if we're gonna fit, so stay tuned. Well, now we just got a house full of bimmers. Got our old blue demon, black Betty, and the silver shark all chilling out here. Fortunately, my battery for the Blue Demon died after sitting for like three months, probably left something open. So put that battery in here since this one did not have a battery, its battery actually died too after sitting for like eight months. <laughs> so got this one, charging this one. So I actually did get a new control arm in. And as you can see, this one, it's very shiny. This one's not very shiny. So I'm, I'm kind of mad because One's gonna be shiny, one's not, even though that one's clean. So now I'm in a pickle, like, do I, you know, feed my OCD and go ahead and get another one of these to match that one? Or do I just leave? I don't know, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and slap that on, complete the subframe. everything nice and shiny and new all bushings done everything new the motor mounts racks cleaned up uh, got new boots new inner rods lied not inner rods inner rods are the same got new outer rods new control arm and yeah next thing once we get this on the car we're gonna be doing brakes and the entire front of the subframe and suspension will be completely redone. So good on that. All right, so after finishing up some things, I got the turbo manifold back off, re-clocked it to where I needed to be, and now we're gonna remount it back up in here. Um, I also, if you can come under here, if you have a bottom mount, you're probably gonna run into the turbo hitting your engine right there, so I did have to shave that down just a tad bit to make some clearance room for the turbo. So yeah, we're gonna fit that back up in there. See how it fits and then line up the charge piping and measure that out, get that cut, and then all of our intercooler piping will be done. We just gotta finish the wastegate, exhaust, injectors, fuel pump, and the math, and we're done. Whoa, there's a home. Alrighty, it's been a couple days since I last filmed, but uh, off camera today I went ahead and cut a bunch of hot side piping. And I went ahead and I got it all cooked up. So as you can see, we got our turbo hanging out there. We got a 90 coming off that into a two inch pipe and another 90 coming down. That meets another 90, meeting a two inch to three inch 90 and into our intercooler. So now we've got our hot side charge piping hooked back up. Um, I went ahead and threw the manifold back on today, secured it all, tightened it down, put my exhaust flange on the turbo. Um, that's just going to be there for now. It, if you look, it has no clearance. Um, it would actually literally fit right here if I were to do this, but I'm going to have this on here so that way I can start it up. And once I get everything done, I can drive this over to the exhaust shop and then they can actually cut this off and make a bend to come this way away from the transmission. I know um, I'll definitely have to shave that down. To make some clearance there off the transmission, but besides that, just gotta mount up our wastegate piping, get our wastegate uh, welded on about right here, have a nice little dump, get our exhaust finished out the back, and that's pretty much it. I mean, we're getting really close, guys. We're getting really close to getting fired up. Gotta get some new spark plugs in there. Um, gotta get some new oil in there. Hook up our lines, like I said. Of course, I am going to redo the catch can lines get this heater hose out of here, switch it over to the braided steel line, get that all hooked back up. All right, so obviously the engine's lifted, so 
covered that up with a bag and some tape because they're not gonna connect right now. But went ahead and put on the cold side piping. Went ahead and clamped down most of the hard side piping, hot side piping, my bad. And I put a filter on the turbo. And then I also put on the uh, wastegate piping for off the manifold. Now we are gonna cut that and then mount the wastegate and then obviously extend the uh, tubing into the exhaust or just straight down kind of how it is. So steel braided hose, a bunch of dash 10 AM fittings, which this is for the oil pump. So we're gonna be measuring out uh, how long of hose we need from the turbo to the pump, back to the turbo, well actually back to the pan, which isn't that far off the turbo. Uh, we're gonna build those hoses and then we're gonna use the rest of the hose to replace our heater hose off of this here oil catch can. So we're gonna go ahead and get this heater hose off there, get some nice new dash 10 fittings, fit it up to here, get some nice hose pressed in and uh, clean up this engine bay, make it shine a little bit. So let's get on that. Alright, so I lied. I thought that um, the sizes for the catch can was either a dash 6 or a dash 8 in. I got dash 6 to dash 10 in. Didn't fit. Got dash 8 to 10 in. Didn't fit. So I believe they are 3 8 NPT fittings. So we're going to go ahead and order those because we need those same ones for the pump down there, anyways. So. While we're at it, we're just gonna go ahead and measure the lines we need and mock them up and uh, get those pressed in and fitted and that'll probably be it for today's video. And just like that, we got our hoses for our oil feed and return. So, now we're just waiting on the oil pan to get drilled, welded, and we can put these on oil spark plugs and start the car up and see if it runs. But that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks so much for tuning in. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on Addicted to Cars.